pathogenesis of ANCA-associated vasculitis. ANCA-associated vasculitis, or AAV, is a rare disorder that may affect many organs of the body by attacking the blood vessels, most often the small blood vessels. A hallmark of these vasculitides is the presence of pathogenic autoantibodies called antineutrophil cytoplasmic antibodies, or ANCAs. AAV often involves the blood vessels of the lungs and kidneys, but it can also cause damage to the blood vessels in the skin, eyes, and other vascular beds. The autoimmune response involves antigen-presenting cells, T cells, neutrophils, and B cells, which are the cells responsible for synthesizing ANCAs. However, the interplay of these cells is not fully understood. AAV, which can be life-threatening, is hypothesized to initially involve pathogenic interactions between neutrophils and endothelial cells. The precise sequence of steps leading to vascular damage has not been fully delineated. Activating events such as infection or exposure to other environmental stimuli cause pro-inflammatory cytokines to be secreted. These cytokines can prime neutrophils and induce migration of certain proteins from granules within the neutrophils to the cell surface. Some of these proteins can serve as antigens for ANCAs. Interaction of ANCAs with cell surface antigens and with FC receptors further primes neutrophils. The conformation of neutrophil adhesion molecules changes causing neutrophils to firmly adhere to the endothelium. Reactive oxygen species, proteolytic enzymes, and factors that activate the alternative complement pathway are released, causing damage to the endothelium and vascular wall. The ANCA-activated neutrophils release additional pro-inflammatory cytokines that recruit more neutrophils and other inflammatory cells amplifying the vasculitic process. Monocytes, which can be activated by the same processes as neutrophils, can also contribute to the vasculitic process by differentiating into macrophages. ANCA-activated neutrophils and other inflammatory cells, such as lymphocytes and monocytes, infiltrate and destroy the vessel wall. As the inflammatory and necrotizing process extends into the perivascular tissue, fibrin is formed by coagulation factors in plasma. This produces the appearance of fibrinoid necrosis. Injury to the vessel walls can result in localized hemorrhage. For example, extravasation of red blood cells may be associated with pulmonary hemorrhage or hematuria. In addition, a subset of AAV patients may be at an increased risk for venous thromboembolism. Both the inflammatory process and the ensuing fibrosis may contribute to narrowing of the blood vessel lumen, further reducing blood flow to critical organs. While we've illustrated the proposed pathologic events in a single blood vessel, AAV is a recurring and relapsing condition that is associated with vascular damage in multiple organs throughout the body. The pathogenesis of AAV is not fully understood, but ANCAs appear to play a significant role. Additional studies on the regulatory mechanisms of B cells, T cells, and neutrophils should continue to improve our understanding of AAV pathogenesis.